All right, so this is the start of part two in our CSWA practice problem number five video series. Uh, if you haven't watched the first video, stop, go back, watch the first video, because that's where we show how to model each one of the parts that are used in this assembly model. Um, so to start my assembly, I'm going to go to File, New, Assembly. And the first thing that I'm going to add into my assembly is the lower base. And I'm going to click the check. So um, this lower base is fixed because it is locked into place. Um, it's got the fixed mark there. And I'm going to create a coordinate system at the end. So I'm OK with that. I'm going to leave that fixed as it is. Um, now I'm going to go Insert Components, and I'm going to start dragging in links. So up here it says, um, hit OK button to insert a component at the origin. Use the push pin to insert multiple copies of the same or different components. So I want to input eight of these. So I'm going to hit this push pin, and I'm going to click one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right, now we're done. Um, so now I'm just going to start mating this link to my base. So click that surface, click this surface, hit the mate button, make those coincident. Now I'm going to click these two diameters to make this concentric. I'm going to do the same thing over here. So that surface to this surface, that diameter to that diameter. Check, good. Do the same thing on this side, from there to there. Zoom in, get the two diameters here. Twirl around to this side. Let's go that surface to this surface. Mate, now diameter to diameter, good. Okay, so I got those all in place. I'm just going to leave it right there. So these are floating around. You know, they're at different angles, but that's okay. And then these are going to be my links for the top, so I'll kind of move these over to the side and get them out of my visual space. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the pivot. So insert components. Let's select my pivot. Click open. I want two of these. So again, I'm going to hit the push pin. I'm going to drop one, two. And I'm going to click that diameter of the pivot. And I'm going to click this. And I'm going to say I want those to be concentric. Now I'm going to go over to this side and do the same thing with those two diameters. So now if I click this surface and this over here, now this pivot is nice and defined where I want it to be. Let's do the same thing on the other side. So click that diameter, go over to here. I don't usually like to select edges, so I'm going to delete that. I'm going to select that surface. And then get the surface. Yeah, concentric. There we go. All right, that's what I want. Now let's get this one to this one. There we go. Looking good. And now this surface to that surface. Make those coincident. Hit the check. Now, this moves together, and this moves together. Cool. Uh, I'm going to now insert the shaft. So I'm kind of building this from the bottom up, and then I'll add some of the pins at the end. So our shaft, insert. Let's drop that in there. And I want the shaft to be concentric to this hole right there. So mate, concentric, good. Now I'm going to go to this other hole, click that cylinder, and then that side of the shaft, concentric, good. Now what I want to do is I'm going to go to advanced mates because there's something called the width mate, which is really slick, and that's going to center the shaft between these two pivots. So in the blue box, I'm going to select each end of the shaft. In the purple box, I'm going to select each end of the pivot. And magically, it automatically centers. So we're good. So now you can kind of see it. It's starting to move. It's still not constrained because I got all these other links to add. But uh, we can do that next. So next thing. 
let's click these two diameters and make these concentric. And now I'm going to make this surface and this surface coincident. Same thing here. That surface to this surface. Let's make that coincident. And then let's make this diameter to that diameter concentric. Next, we take that surface, that surface, coincident, diameter, this diameter, concentric. That surface and this surface, coincident. Zoom in, that diameter, this diameter, concentric. Good. All right, so now we're, we're starting to build our thing. This can, this is wiggling around. That's okay. Can, we can let it wiggle. Um, next, I'm going to insert components, and I'm going to insert the upper base. So once you insert the upper base, I can start mating this to the rest of my assembly. So it's kind of upside down right now. So what I want to do is um, I'm going to select this diameter over here. Well, you know what, let's do this. I know that this has to be flat, so I'm going to say that this surface and the bottom surface of my of my base, I'm going to mate those, and those need to be not coincident, but parallel. And if I flip this around, it'll flip that around for me. So now that I somewhat got it in the correct location, I can come in here and, and make these two concentric. Then over here, I can make this one and this one concentric. That's going to lock those together. And then let's go over here, do that one, do that one, concentric. And this one, two, where is it? Ah, oh, it's way down here. Do that one. I'm just going to swing that up, make that concentric. So now, if I look at this, this piece can still move side to side. So I need to make that to that. Nice. All right. So everything's looking pretty good right now. It's um, we're moving roughly how we want to move, kind of, sort of, right? Um, now I'm going to add my pins. So at the bottom, insert component. This is going to be the long pin. I want to insert multiples. So I'm going to hit the push pin, drop, drop. Now I'm going to go insert component, short pin. Select, drop, and, oops. You can save a little time if you hit the push pin. So select the two diameters you want to mate. Make that concentric. I'll pull this back a little bit so I can click that surface and that surface. Good. Eh, I don't like doing edges, but there we go. Concentric. Then that surface is going to be touching this surface, coincident. Down here, let's do diameter. So diameter, concentric. That surface to that surface, coincident. That diameter that diameter concentric that surface to that surface is coincident okay so all my pieces are now mated into my assembly and if I look at it visually it's it's, it's got this little it's dancing a little bit and it's kind of moving around so what I what I want to do is I want to make sure that this shaft is always horizontal so I can look into my shaft under my features I see this top plane I can make that top plane of my shaft coincident, not coincident, parallel to the top plane of my assembly or basically any horizontal surface on this assembly. Now, when I move this, it moves exactly how I want it to move. Okay, one of the last steps is to constrain the angular, um, the angle dimension that's given in the assembly, which is dimension C, which is 36 degrees. So again, I can click um, basically any horizontal surface and 
this edge, or that surface on my link, select mate. I don't want that to be coincident. I want to set an angle of 36 degrees and hit the angle. So now everything should be fully defined. Everything's in my assembly. I'm basically done. The last step is I have to create a coordinate system. So I go insert reference geometry coordinate system. I'm going to put that coordinate system down here at this corner. And I have to make close attention to make sure that my x, y, and z are located in the right direction. Um, so my x-axis is correct. My y-axis needs to go this direction. Good. And my z is up. So now my coordinate system is correct. I'm going to uh, rename this coordinate system in it to win it, okay? You could leave it called coordinate system one. It's not that big a deal. And now when I click mass properties, so under evaluate mass properties, you'll see that by default, it's reporting the coordinate system relative to default coordinate system, which is based on the origin. And this down here, if I change this to in it to win it, now the answer updates with my center of mass location as shown below. That concludes this video and is the solution on how to model this assembly in preparation for the CSWA exam. Thanks for watching.